So to kick off, we're going to introduce Daryl. Hi, Daryl. Hello. How are you doing? You okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got a little girl here who's got a hand and a packet of crisps, so hopefully it's not going to be too noisy. Um, That's a good idea. <laughs> it's a very good idea, isn't it? Uh, welcome. We are so pleased that you're here with us. We're very sorry that the weather has not complied and that it's not cold and windy like it should be in September or August, really. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what happens when you plan things. They never quite go according to plan, but we'll we'll have a good go of it and, and see if we can keep all these people entertained and do a nice recording of it, too. Thank you so much. So just a little bit of introduction into Daryl. Daryl, I've known you for probably what is now 17 years when you moved down to Lyme Regis. Um, you actually started your career um, um, in arts and creativity by working at uh, an educational arts centre. Am I correct? Yes. And then yeah, so I'm, going to, yeah. I'm going to do this potted history from our, all of our conversations over the years. Um, you began in arts education and you actually trained as an illustrator. And, and I find that journey fascinating to then suddenly becoming the king of cardboard. Um, <laughs> but over the over the 17 years that I've known you. Oh, my goodness. I do apologise. Let me just put that on mute. Um, over the 17 years that I've known you, you have become essentially a national treasure in terms of creating beautiful sculptures out of materials that we throw away, um, essentially junk. And, you know, you can go, for all of you that you're listening, you can go to Daryl's website. It is D-A-R-R-E-L-L-W-A-K-E. E L A M dot com. So if you go to www.darrellwakeland.com, you can explore an extraordinary collection of projects that Daryl has put online for free. And where Daryl has really kind of excelled in the last, I would say, the last 18 months is during COVID, because during lockdown, like most of us, Daryl was stuck at home, couldn't get out to schools. And he thought to himself, what can I do? I've got all this stuff lying around the house, I've got loads of kids at home sitting bored not wanting to do their home learning um, and yeah I'm just going to put projects up and he put projects up on Twitter every day and I think there were what 50 or 60 arts projects that you put up for free that came out of your own brain and it was a sensation and you I think your Twitter following jumped from about what was it two or three thousand down up to about thirteen thousand so I, I'm just I'm in awe of your creativity your energy your capability to turn a cardboard tube into a magical piece of art so i'm going to hand over to you daryl thank you ever so much for being here and um, we are going to attempt to try and turn this into an incredible creature of the forest thank you fantastic well uh, it's lovely to be here it's lovely to see both of you two and i hope everyone else enjoys this too um, as Angina has just explained, uh, I am an artist, I'm a professional artist, but I don't paint things, I don't sell my work, I make sculptures, I work with children mainly and teachers and in education settings. And as Angina very clearly explained, I use a lot of stuff that we'd normally throw away. So lots of cardboard and also lots of things that you will have in your recycling box maybe in your kitchen at home and things that you throw away every week. So before we start to do our squirrel, I'm going to explain very quickly how I use those kinds of objects and shapes that normally we get rid of to create different things. So I've got four classic things that you'll probably have in your kitchen recycling here. So the first one I've got is a plastic carton. OK, so a drinks carton. So we get rid of lots of those, don't we? So I'm going to pop that down on the table here. I've got some food packaging. So I've got a little yogurt pot here, like a little tub, nice and clean because I've washed it out. And I've got something else we all recognize. I've got an egg box here. And then I've got the thing that we're going to use today, which is a cardboard tube. So toilet roll, kitchen roll, those kind of tubes that you get left with. We throw away literally thousands of these each every year. All right. So we're going to use some of this stuff, but I want to just quickly show you how I would reinterpret some of those pieces of scrap that we'd throw away. So let's have a look at this one. If I hold that one up again and hold it towards the camera, you can see how that little yogurt part almost already looks like a little face, doesn't it? It looks like a little puppet's head or something like that. So what I do is I take bits of cardboard and I transform things like this. So that yogurt pot is still there. 
but it's being transformed into a little tiger that actually you can kind of open the mouth and play with. And if I turn that around, you can see how I've done that. I've taken bits of cardboard and I've stuck them on with some tape. You can see the masking tape still on the back there. I've added some details on the front. So I've put some whiskers and some teeth in there. It's quite simple. It's just layers of cardboard that have been built up. And then there's a little bit of paper mache gone there and a bit of paint. So it still looks like the yogurt pot. You can still see the plastic edge by my fingers, but it's being transformed. So let's have a look at another transformation. Let's go back to this amazing milk carton. If I turn this upside down, and hold it up to the camera, you can see how suddenly it looks like a face. So you've got the bridge of a nose, you've got the eyebrows, you've got where the mouth would be. And again, if you carefully cut this carton into its pieces, into separate parts and reassemble them, then you can make something that looks like a very convincing head. So if I hold that one up, you can see that's made out of the same carton, but I've just reattached some of the pieces. So I've taken a bit from the back and stuck it on the top for, make, for to make the head rounder. And also I've attached the other bit of the spout on to make a mouth at the bottom. So that face, that head could become anything. It could become a monster. It could become um, a king or a queen. It could become, you know, something spooky and scary like a witch. You could add any details you like on top of that. Right. Next one. Very quickly, we've got an egg box. Now, egg boxes are brilliant for making models out of because they're quite strong things. And also they've got lots of shapes on the actual surface of the box. They've got little round shapes. They've got curves. They've got square shapes. They've even got these kind of spiky shapes inside. So, again, what I do is I look at those and I try and see shapes within that box. So if you have a look at this little bunny rabbit here, if I turn that around, that's made from pieces of that same egg carton. Again, you can see I've masking tape them all together. And all that is, is about five or six pieces of that box that I've rejoined. You can see the edge of the join there on the bit that I've used for the nose and obviously this separate bit here for the mouth. And then I've added a bit of paint. I don't actually use a massive amount of paint on the things that I make. You can see that is very similar to the colour of the egg carton that it actually came from. So I've just used bits really to highlight it, to make the eyes and the teeth and the whiskers stand out. So then we get to what we're going to use today. So cardboard tubes, I use loads of them. So here's a, a very simple example of how I use them. So this little mouse here, if I turn that around, you can see all the bits of the mouse's body and the head and the legs are made out of pieces of that tube. And the reason I've done that is when you look at the front of it, it looks more three dimensional because the tube is rounded. So it gives you that kind of 3D effect. The only thing I haven't used um, out of the tube to build this mouse is this tail here. And this tail is made out of the other thing that we're gonna use today which is kitchen foil. Now kitchen foil's great. It's almost like a substitute for clay, which sounds like a strange thing to say, but you can roll it up into shapes just like you could if you were rolling up pieces of clay and attaching them onto a model. And the brilliant thing with foil is when you make a shape out of it, the foil stays in that shape. It's very strong, it's cheap, it's lightweight. So it's a brilliant material for modeling with. So that tail there was made out of a piece of that foil. Now I use the tubes for lots of different things. So I'm just gonna show you about three more things and then we're gonna have a go at using one of them to make our squirrel. So a simple one that you may have seen people do before, is to use the tubes to make some kind of building. So this castle here has got some tubes, not only for the little turrets at the side here, but also I've cleverly used them to make the flags at the top. And again, that's because they're curved and they give you that look as if the flags are blowing in the wind. So you can see if I tilt that, that's how the flags look so good because they're curved and not just flat pieces of cardboard. So you can use the tubes for something like that. Another quite obvious one would be something like a space rocket. So lots of people have probably done things like this before. This is just my version of it. So all I've done there is chopped the tube into smaller and smaller sections and joined them together and then paper mache and painted it. You look very carefully, you can see the wrinkles in the paper on the background where the paper has been glued on first to make it stronger. And then it's just been painted very simply. So that gives you an idea how you can take something like that and make something that's a bit more complex. 
Now, here's one that you wouldn't imagine was made out of tubes. So if I hold that zebra up, that looks a lot more complicated than what I've been showing you. But if we take that half a tube and we place it on, we can see how almost every part of that zebra has been made out of these tubes. So the head, the neck, the body, and even pieces of it have been used for the legs to give them that rounded effect that we just talked about. Now, this picture is a bit of a trick because if I turn it, you can see it's not as three dimensional as it first looks. It's only about that wide. But because the tubes are rounded, just like we talked about when we were looking at the little mouse, you can see that it makes the whole picture look more 3D. OK, so we're going to have a go today at making a little red squirrel. I've only had a week to work this out because they actually did a poll online so that people could choose which animal they wanted me to make. So what I try and do a little bit like what I've just been showing you is I try to choose something to make the squirrel out of. And then I try to look at the shapes that I need. So obviously I've got some reference here. I've got a nice little picture here of a squirrel. Um, and you have to look carefully at the shapes of things. So squirrels have got quite a pointy nose. They've got fairly small legs and they've obviously got the very big bushy tail at the back. So we're going to have a go at making one. You can do one of two things. You can join in with me and try and keep up with me as I do these first few bits. I am going to be quite quick, but I'll try and give you time to catch up each stage. If you miss anything, then this session is going to be recorded so you can always go back to it. And also at the end of this session, I'm going to show you how I would finish this off. So I'll show you how I would add the colour and the detail onto there, which you can do later on. OK. And one other thing to say is the cardboard tubes we're using are quite fragile. They're made of quite thin card. So if something breaks, don't get upset because you can use the masking tape to fix it and then you can cover it over, okay? So if something goes slightly wrong, don't worry about it too much. You can always look back later and have a go at fixing it. So I have got the things that you need for this. So I've got a pair of scissors and some tape. Masking tape's better, but if you've only got tape, that's fine. Um, I've got my tube in front of me, obviously, and I've got some tin foil, which I'm gonna use later on. You only need a couple of pieces of that. So a couple of kind of A4 size pieces. Right, so. First of all, we're going to take our cardboard tube and we're going to chop a piece off the top. Now, to help with this, because I'm an artist, I have done some little diagrams, OK, to help with this, because this first bit is quite tricky and then it gets a bit easier. So we're going to chop a bit off the top of our tube, but it needs to not be a straight bit. It needs to be diagonal. So we end up with a head that's kind of pointing down. So if you watch what I'm going to do with the tube, I'm going to grab it like that and I'm going to cut, but I'm going to cut at an angle. OK, so I'm going to chop straight through it. It doesn't matter if the tube gets a bit squashed. So I'm going to go like that and I'm going to take that piece off. So that's going to be our head and this is going to be our body. OK, so see if you can chop a piece off that looks a bit like mine. It doesn't matter if it's not quite as pointy, if it's a little bit flatter, but see if you can chop that shape off. OK, so I'm going to hold that up. And I'll just hold the picture back up as well so that you can see. So we're taking a section off the top like that. OK. And then what I'm going to do just to make this a little bit stronger is I'm going to put a few pieces of tape across the top where that hole is in the tube. I'm going to try and make some little bridges of tape that go across. So you can see what I'm doing. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can see how mine's gone a little bit kind of wrinkly and bumpy. I'm going to put another one on the top. And sometimes to kind of flatten it out, you can poke your fingers inside the tube and give it a little press down. So I'm going to press that down. Now, I've still got some holes in mine, look, top and bottom. So I'm going to put some tape there, squash it down. And obviously, each time you do this, each layer of tape you put on, it gets a little bit thicker and a little bit stronger. But you can see how that's almost going to be our little head shape. If you imagine there's little ears on top of it, this is going to be the pointy nose. And what we've just filled in is the top part of the head. OK, so we're going to pop the head to one side for a minute. So don't lose it. So pop some tape over the top of it like I've done. Give it a really good squish down. I'm just going to put one more piece in the middle like that. OK, there we go. That's the little head. I'm going to pop that out of the way. Right. So. Here's our body. Now, this is where it gets tricky. We've got to make two sets of front legs and a set of back legs as well. 
and we've got to try and make it so it looks a little bit more 3D, okay? So what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna cut two more little lines. To help me with this, I'm actually gonna squeeze it together a bit at the front like that, almost like it's coming to a point like that. And I'm gonna cut two lines that look like smiles, okay? So here's my little picture of that. So you can see there's two lines they don't go right the way across like our other one. They stop halfway. So I'd try and watch me do this. I'm going to hold it up to the camera. So somewhere near the top, I'm going to cut a curve that doesn't go right the way through the tube. So you can see that it stops around about where my finger is. And then just underneath it, I'm going to copy it and I'm going to do another one. And I'm going to curve that round too. So you've got two curves like that. OK, so those have gone right the way through because obviously I've squashed the tube together. OK, so you've got two pieces going right the way through. And then what I want you to do is I want you to snip the end of them. So you put your scissors in, do what I've just done and it will open them up. They almost look like a little rib cage like that. OK, so you've opened them out like that. All right. And then with a piece of sticky tape, the top two, one, two, are actually going to make the neck. These are going to be the front legs. OK, so the top two, you want to rejoin them back together. So I'm actually going to overlap them. So I'll hold that up so you can see I'm going to overlap them like that. So it makes a little neck and I'm going to tape them back together. So by sliding it, I'll just show you that again. By sliding those two bits back together, you get a neck that's slightly smaller than the original tube. You can see that, can't you? So I'm going to take a little bit of my sticky tape and I'm going to join that neck back together. So if you imagine we put our head on our neck now, that's the squirrel's head, that's the squirrel's neck. It fits on top and it's now got two little cute front legs that are sticking out like that. OK, so I'm going to hold that up again so that you can see. So what I did was I cut two smile shapes out. I squeezed the tube together, cut one, two. Then I snipped through the end of them and I pulled the top one together to make a neck. OK, I'm going to give you a minute to do that. So while you're doing that, I'm going to put a little bit more tape on mine to make it stronger. So I'm going to pop some inside. Let's have a little look. Yeah, that looks a little bit weak. So I'm going to pop a little bit in there. You don't need massive bits of tape for this. You'll see with me, I'm often tearing the tape into smaller pieces so it doesn't get too messy. It doesn't go too crazy. Right. OK, now, if we want those little legs to look a little bit more like legs, if you give them a squeeze like I'm doing, so I'm going to grab them and give them a squeeze like that. Then they start to look a little bit more round. OK, you can see like that. And the idea is you could put them together. Quite often you see squirrels with their front legs together because that's how they eat things, isn't it? They hold it together in their hands and, and they have a little uh, chew on whatever they've collected. OK, so there's the neck. There's the two little arms there. OK, that's probably the hardest bit of the whole model. All right. So. There's our head. There's our two little arms sticking out. OK, if you find when you've made the arms that they are a little bit weak, mine's actually a bit weak because part of the tube is coming away inside. So what you can do is pop an extra little bit of tape on, roll it around and that will help it to get a bit stronger. OK, so if it does go a little bit wrong, you can always do that. OK, so. Keeping our head to one side still, we've only got one more tricky bit to do and then it gets a whole lot easier. So we need to do the bottom two legs. So the bigger two legs at the bottom. I've got one last picture to show you. We're going to cut them so that they almost look like a little leg and then that little thigh part, that thicker part of the animal's leg. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to squeeze the bottom part of this together again. So I'm going to squeeze the bottom part of this tube together. You can see it doesn't have to be perfect. Mine's a little bit wonky there. And then I'm going to get my scissors. And I am going to snip right through that fold. So it opens the whole tube up like that. 
And then I'm going to squeeze it together and I'm going to try and cut out that shape that I've just shown you. So I'm going to try and go in for the leg. And then I'm going to try and do a slightly fatter part of the leg. So can you see that shape there if I push that bit out of the way? So I've gone in like a little leg and then that little muscle on the top of the leg. When I'm making models, I quite often describe it as the chicken drumstick. Yeah, because on the end of the bone, you've got that meaty part where it's attached onto the body. So now we've got our two little legs and we've got this weird bit in the middle. So instead of cutting that off, we're going to pull it together and make a tummy. So we're going to make the front part of the squirrel. So it's going to go like that. So you can see how that works. You've now got the two legs that have got these thicker shapes. And then this bit in the middle that looked like two little bat's wings in the middle here, we're going to pull them together and overlap them. So I'm going to overlap those together and I'm going to grab a little bit of tape and I'm going to stick that together. Now, it's quite tricky because you've got to almost reach inside the model to push the tape down so you can see how that's working. So now we've got a little body with a little tummy, a little neck. And the only bit that looks a bit weird is we've got a great big hole in the middle of the body. So where the arms were cut out of, we've got a hole. So I'm going to fill that hole in just with a bit of tape. So while you're having a little go at those legs, I'm going to put some tape over the hole. I'm going to give it a real good squeeze down. And if it's a little bit too big, I'll show you what I mean. If you put a bit of tape on and it goes a little bit too high, tuck it inside the neck because we're going to hide that with the head in a minute and push all of that down. Right. OK, OK. So now it almost stands up, doesn't it? You can see that almost like a little rabbit's body, isn't it, as well? OK, so give that a little squeeze down. And again, if you want to, with these two legs at the bottom, you can give those a little pinch to make those a bit more 3D as well. So I'm giving them a little squeeze together. And just like I did before, if they're a little bit weak, you can put a bit more tape on them. So Mine feels a little bit flimsy on that side, so I'm going to roll a bit of tape around that leg. That's all going to disappear because you can paint it and colour it and you can get rid of any little bits that you don't want to see. OK, so we have now not wasted anything. We haven't thrown anything away. All right. We've got a head like that. We've got a body. We've got the four legs. OK, now. We are going to use the tin foil in a minute. Before we do, there's one last trick we can do. We need some pointy ears, so like triangles, tall triangles. So what I'm going to do, rather than using some other stuff, I'm going to use a little bit from here. And here's the clever thing you can do. Just behind those legs that we've stuck on, I'm going to cut a triangle. So I'm going to go up. You've got to be careful not to cut the legs off. So it's quite near the back look. I'm going to cut a triangle out like this okay that triangle has just dropped down on my table there it is okay and i'm going to turn this around and i'm going to do another one the other side and what it looks like is it looks like the back of that bottom set of legs you can see there and then you've got that little bit at the back that we're going to attach the tail to but the brilliant thing is you've now got two ears you've got the two triangles that have dropped out and we're going to attach those onto the head. So I'm going to put them on one side, fix them together and stick them on. So there's one on one side. I'm putting them quite far back. So if you look at the picture, they're quite near the back of the head, aren't they? So I'm going to pop that on. Let's put one on the other side as well before I lose it like that. So again, wrap a little bit of tape round squeeze that all down and then we've got two ears like that now you notice when you look at red squirrels that they've got these little tufts on their ears so they've got an extra bit of fur if you want to do that if you put an extra bit of tape on and make the ears a little bit longer so it's quite nice you can see through my tape there because it's quite sunny today you can see the extra bit of tape if i wanted to make it taller i could do that again wrap the tape around it's even bigger look like that. And if you put an extra bit of tape on the ears, you can then snip back into the tape to make the ears look furry. So with your scissors, I'm going to do this real close to the camera. 
I'm just going to snip back into those ears. Doesn't matter if they go a bit ragged. And then you get that kind of furry top to the ear. So I'm going to do that on the other side as well. So we'll spin it around, chop, chop, like that. And then we have got those furry ears like that. Okay, then that becomes our little squirrel like that. And then we're going to move on to our foil. So I'm going to pop that to one side for a minute. I'm going to grab a little bit of foil. It's a bit noisy to start off with while I tear it off the roll. And what I want to do is I want to make that bushy tail that's going to join onto the back of our cardboard and it's going to go right the way around. And it sort of makes an S shape. So it goes right from the back of the neck of the squirrel and it goes right the way down to its bottom, right the way. So we grab a piece of foil. I'm going to squeeze this foil in my hands like that. When you squeeze something in your hands, you're obviously going to start getting a kind of sausage shape, aren't you? So if you give this a roll, hopefully you can make it a little bit more pointy at one end and a little bit more pointy at the other end. In the middle, it needs to almost be a bit furry, so you can kind of twist it and squeeze it together so it's not straight you know so it's kind of bumpy and if you do it and it's a little bit too small rather than starting again just put the one you've made inside another bit of foil roll that around and then that will make it get thicker or longer or whatever you want to do okay and then to hold all that together i'm going to take a big bit of tape i'm going to put one end of the tape on and I'm going to roll it around, roll, 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 roll like that. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't stick very well, because when you get to the end, you can see mine's not stuck very well there. You just put it back in your hands, give it a little rub and the tape will start to stick together. So we're getting a kind of banana shape now, aren't we? So we'll put a little bit more tape on, give it a squeeze. And then I want this to be a kind of S shape, don't I? So this is the brilliant thing with the foil. I'm going to turn the end over there. And then I'm going to turn the end over there. So we've got that kind of an S shape like that. That goes on the back of our squirrel like that. And we've got this nice little flap at the back to attach this to. So that little bit of the squirrel's body, we can join and overlap those two pieces. So I'm going to put, I'm turning it upside down. So it looks a bit strange, but I'm going to put the tail on that little flap at the back like that. And I'm going to try to wrap some tape around it. So we'll wrap it around like that. Squeeze it really tight in your fingers. And then I'm going to pull that up in an S shape like that. And then I'm going to attach it to the squirrel's back here so you can actually join it on. It doesn't matter if you've already attached the head, actually, that you can still do the same. So if I pop the head back on, you can attach it just onto the squirrel's back like that so we're just joining the two together okay so i'm going to put a little bit more tape on mine while you have a go with that just push that together there we go it doesn't matter if a bit of the foil showing as well because we can cover that over afterwards and if this bit at the bottom feels a little bit weak again I've got a little hole in mine. I've got a little gap appearing here. So I'm just going to pop some tape on, squish it down, push it into all the spaces and get it to stick down. That doesn't matter because it's nice and furry. Right. So it still stands up like that. OK. And we've got our head there. You can actually attach the head on if you want to, but I'm going to leave mine separate for a moment. Now, in a moment, I am going to do a little bit of paper mache on this and I'm going to paint it to show you how you could finish it. But before I do, I just want you to I wanted to show you a couple of other things you could try with the foil if you wanted to. So I've got this extra bit of foil here. If you wanted the squirrel to hold a nut in its hand or an acorn or something like that, then you could roll the foil up, make a little shape like that. And that could be held in its arms like that so it's holding something all right i've actually got a little one here that i've paper mached earlier with a little bit of brown paper so you can do that if you want to you can also use that same technique to make a little nose so if you wanted the squirrel to have a little nose 
you roll up a little tiny bit of foil, just like you were going to throw it in the bin, pop it on the point of that head that we made. So I'll hold that up so you can see. Squeeze it on so you can push that down like that. Squish a bit more tape on. I'm just going to make sure that's not going to fall off. There we go. All right. So like that. So you could make a little nose, you could make a, a nut or an acorn for it to hold. And obviously we've got the tail that's on there. And then there's only what, one other thing I wanted to show you with the making. These would look quite cute with those little googly eyes on. So those little kind of eyes that you can buy to go on uh, soft toys and things like that. If you haven't got that, one of the things you can do is use a hole puncher. If you've got a hole puncher anywhere, you know, like one of those things that you punch through holes in paper, you can actually make your own little eyes like that. So sometimes what I do is I get a scrap bit of card. This is just a rubbishy bit of card. I'm going to chop a couple of holes in it so you can see what I've done there. And then I'm going to kind of cut round those almost like a donut. So what I'm doing is I'm going around that circle. And then you end up with what looks like a little kind of eye shape like that. So I'm going to do two of those because I might actually stick those on to show you how they look. All right. That's not brilliant cutting, but it will do. OK, so there's the other one in my fingers there. So I don't want to lose those. So I'm going to put them just up on the shelf there. OK, right. So for this next bit, I am just going to attach my head to my body let's just pop that on with a bit of tape now actually you don't need to attach the head on if you don't want to you could keep it separate um, and you could paper mache them separately and then keep it like a little secret compartment inside all right maybe you could stash a few little acorns in there right okay so there's my little squirrel ready to go. Now, you could just paint that. The only problem with that is when the paint makes the cardboard go wet, sometimes it makes it go a little bit more flimsy, not quite as strong. So what I often do is I use a bit of tissue paper. If you haven't got tissue paper, you can use toilet roll or kitchen roll and you can rip it up into pieces, mix a bit of glue with water and you can use that. I've got some tissue paper here, so I've got some that's a kind of brown tissue paper here you could use anything i've got this paper here this is the kind of tissue paper that they stuff inside a new pair of shoes when you buy them so it's just basically packaging tissue so if i get a little bit of my watered down glue so this is just glue mixed half and half with water i'm going to get a bit of the glue i'm going to pop it on the model like that i'm going to put the paper on like this and then i'm going to push it into all the spaces so sometimes you need slightly smaller pieces so i think what i'm going to do with this is it's going to be really tricky in the time for me to paper mache the whole thing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the bits that i think are the weakest parts to make it a bit stronger and i'll paint the rest okay so i'm going to hold this up so you can see what i'm doing every time i put some glue on I am adding a little bit more paper. Now, obviously, you can do this later on if you if you want to. You could make your squirrel today and then you could see if you could grab hold of some paper. It doesn't have to be the right colour because you can paint the colours over the top when it's dry. OK, there we go. That's getting there. Let's grab a little bit more of the paper. Let's try and do one of these little legs. These are quite tricky. And again, you don't want the legs to fall off. So I'm doing it really gently, wrapping it around, push it down like that. Where else shall I do? I'll do a little bit on this side because that's a little bit weak there. So I'll pop a bit on there. And as I said, to save a bit of time, I'm not going to do all of mine now. But if I was doing this and making it really nice and strong, then I would do all of it and I would leave it to dry before I painted it. OK. So there we go. And this bit's a bit weak here around where the tail's joined on. So let's have a go at that too. So I hope while I'm doing this, you guys who are joining in have managed to make the bits that you need, even if you haven't assembled them together, 
maybe you've had a go at making the head and maybe you've had a go at rolling up some of your foil and making an S shape for your tail. But I'm sort of nearly there with this. Let's just put a little bit more on there. OK, and then going back to these eyes that I had, which I've got in front of me here, while this was still really sticky and covered with the gluey paper, I would put an extra bit of glue on the head and I would pop those eyes on. So there's one. I'm going to put one on the other side. And you can see I haven't cut them out brilliantly. They're not brilliant circles, but the whole punch in the middle helps because it gives you a really nice circle in the centre, which ends up being the pupil in the centre of the eye. You can see that on both sides there. All right. Now, if I was doing this myself, I would leave that to dry. It's very sticky. My fingers are all sticking to it. But because we are trying to do this all in once, I'm going to paint it as well. All right. So I have got some water and a couple of little brushes and I've got some paints. Now, for this squirrel, you need some reddy brown colours, don't you? So I've actually got a nice kind of coppery colour, a nice metallic colour in there and a bit of gold. I've got some white and black and a bit of brown. I've also got a bit of tissue just in case I get it all over me. So I've got some kitchen roll there and I've got a couple of brushes here. So I'm going to grab a brush and I'm going to show you what I mean now where it doesn't matter if there's gaps that you didn't paper mache. So things like these lovely furry ears if I just paint both sides of those, it's going to blend in with what we've already made, isn't it? So it's not going to spoil it. I'm going to try and keep my paint away from those little eyes because I don't want those to turn brown. I want those to stay the nice bright white colour they are. So let's pop a little bit of that on. OK. There we go. So top part of the head's done. Let's go down towards this nose. I might put a bit of gold on the nose, actually, or a bit of black or something a little bit different. Let's put a little blob of gold on. There you go. That looks quite cute. So next bit, let's put some paint just on those bits that are missing. Oh, I can see some bits that I've missed around that side. Let's just get rid of those. There we go. OK, so you can see how that's starting to work there. Now, quite often animals are lighter on their tummy, aren't they? So cats and dogs, lots of mammals have got lighter fur on the front of their body. So I'm going to get a bit of white paint and I'm just going to blob some white inside here. So it goes inside the body there. Let's put some on the tummy like that. There it is like that. So that was with my little brush. So I'm going to grab my big brush back again now. We'll do these legs. Now, if I'd had time to paper mache these, they would be a bit stronger. They're a little bit flimsy, but we'll see how we go. There's one leg there. OK, let's turn it around and do the other one. And see if I can get inside them as well. OK, like that. Managed to do that without the legs falling off. OK, and then we've got the two legs at the bottom. So we do the same there. Cool. These are a little bit wobbly because the glue is all wet on them. But I'll see what I can do. I think I can do it. Let's hold that up for you. So there's one of the bottom legs. And let's put another bit of paint on that one. It's a good job I've got this tissue on the table because I'm dripping paint. There we go. OK. And now we've got that and that. And then we're going to do the kind of bushy tail. So I'm going to turn that around. It's quite handy, actually, because I can use my finger to hold that like a little puppet. And I'm going to swap and make this tail a little bit lighter. So I've got a gold. You could mix up like a light brown or you could use a bit of white, actually, because sometimes the I'll do that as well. Let's grab a bit of white and put it on the end. Sometimes the tails are lighter on the end. And then they get a bit more like the fur colour as they come down. So we'll grab a bit of the brown and blend it in, blend it in, blend it in like that. OK, right. So that's getting there, isn't it? That's a nice little cute looking squirrel now. And I'm just going to do one last little thing to finish that off, which is I'm going to take the wooden end of my brush so I'm not bothered that it's still dirty look I'm going to get the wooden end I'm going to dip it in some black 
paint. There you go, just like it was a little pen. And then I'm going to put a little black dot in the centre of that eye. There it is. And then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to put a little black dot in the centre of that eye like that. OK. And then if you want to be super clever about it, if you get an even smaller brush. So this is my little brush. I'm going to use the wrong end of that. I'm going to dip it in the white paint and I'm going to put a tiny little dot inside the black dot. And what that does is it gives you a reflection. And when you look at someone's eyes, like if you look at my eyes now, you'll see the light reflecting on them from the window. Yeah. So because eyes are kind of glassy, they get that kind of sharp reflection off them. So when you see cartoons, they do that a lot, don't they? They have a little dot inside them. So there we go. We have gone from one cardboard tube. We haven't thrown anything away. We haven't wasted anything. We've used a little bit of tin foil. I haven't even used the two pieces that I've had. I've used about a piece and a half of foil, rolled them up, a little bit of tissue paper, either if you can get some coloured tissue, great. If you can't, use some cheap scrap stuff, use some kitchen roll, use some toilet paper, whatever you've got, tear it up, glue it on, and then all you need is a little bit of paint to finish it off. OK, so there we have I'm going to get messy fingers, but I don't mind. We have our little squirrel. I'm going to hold that on my hand like that. And that is ready to leave to dry. OK, if you wanted to, you could make a separate little nut and pop it inside the hands afterwards. Nearly lost it then. There we go. <laughs> so I'm going to put that to one side to dry. And that's what we're aiming for. OK, so good luck. If you get any lovely models made and you want to have a try, if you've had a go, but you need to finish it off, maybe you could take some photos. I'll take some photos of mine as well. We'll get them over to the Wessex Museum uh, website and maybe they can show everyone else what we've done. OK, so I hope everyone's enjoyed that. Good luck. Um, and I'll be really interested to see how you get on. How was that, Angina? <laughs> Thank you so much, Daryl. Oh, my God. It's been a frenzy of cutting and sticking, <laughs> as you know. So it's like our Blue Peter moment now. We're going to show you our creations. Sarita is very much focused on getting eyes done. So we okay. have that, like a hole punch thing. So what she's doing, and you'll like this. Yeah. Do you want me to show Daryl? Yeah. Uh, Do you know where my other eye went? Uh, no, but I think, uh, anyway, I'll show you. This is the other eye. Anyway, we get a little bit so you can see here. We're cutting out ah. circles of foil. And it, what's going to happen is <laughs> she's going to, here's our, look, here's our squirrel. Hey, Great. fantastic. So this this is kind of, if I hold it from a distance and people can see it. Um, that's brilliant. See, that's Sarita's. And she's going to stick really good. foil eye onto here might um, it might not stick we're, we're getting a little bit in, it's a little bit intense here as you can imagine the, um, the thing is with, with with models with models like this it's worth like get get the pieces that you've made strong make sure you're happy with them and they're strong before you go on to the next bit that's right. the thing that people don't see me doing because i've done this so many times i can feel in my hands whether something is strong enough so while i'm talking all the time i've been talking i've been squeezing i've been grabbing extra bits of tape and attaching them so one of the things that children do is they try and race forward onto the next bit before they've got that bit finished and i often say that when i'm in schools you know if you move forward too Sorry. fast before it's strong enough it won't work as well so that's the thing to remember really when you're doing it oh that's um, great advice i mean here are our two attempts at it so they look brilliant yeah. i yeah, yeah. i think yeah. it's sweet is getting a little bit frustrated with eyes so we will have a have a think about how to do that later but yeah i i think they're fabulous little models very very yeah. cute yeah, yeah. Uh, really good can you help me yes i can help you in a moment hang on a sec <laughs> okay, yeah no thank you so much now i just wonder if anybody in the um if anybody in the <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure this happens to teachers a lot doesn't it where <laughs> right in a minute i'll be able to help you in a minute okay so um i don't know if anybody else in uh who's watching has any questions for daryl about you know any steps that you missed or how yeah i've got all the stuff I've got all the stuff here. So if there's anything anyone wants me to go over or hold up, I can. Because like anyone who does these kind of things, I've got my earlier versions. Yeah. So if anybody wants to talk we through things. We did our nutting just there. So we, that's Fantastic. how we did it. 
So we have See, I haven't tape around the back and then we, we I haven't that. got time to I I can't do mine now because it's wet. So I'm gonna have to yeah. leave it, but I do have it here in my hands. Look, it's ready to go. So has anyone got any questions? Is there anything anyone wants me to recap? Yeah, I would be yeah, I don't know. I mean, we started off, we had a bit of a conversation before you started, and Sweeter was desperate to make a monster. So <laughs> <laughs> you must be very well, busy at Halloween doing all sorts of monstrous absolutely. creations. Well, the, the nice thing, the nice thing is that once you've done something like this, you can then go away and start to think about what you could make out of a tube. So I've not only shown you the squirrel, I've also shown you some other stuff. There was the zebra, there was the rocket, there was the castle. There's so many different things you can make. And people always imagine that they've got to be really simple things, but actually you can do really elaborate things. Um, I've got something here that I made for a school workshop I was doing. So you can see that there is still made out of the first two parts of it the main parts of it are made out of the cardboard tube and the rest is just bits of card that i've chopped up so you can take things to another level you can make things and i think that's what people notice about what i do you can do really cute little things like we've been doing mm -hmm. and you can make them in half an hour and you can play with them for a while and they can be fun yeah. but also you can spend the time really doing something more complex and tricky as well so what, what, what's the creation that you think has most surprised you where you've made it and you thought, God, that's amazing. I, I, a, I didn't expect it to turn out like that. And I'm, I'm actually, gen you felt genuinely quite amazed with how it turned out. I think the the egg box ones are the ones that I think everyone, when I first started doing stuff through lockdown, the egg box ones were the ones that people really noticed. And I'm not just talking about, um, mums and dads and children I'm talking about like quite a few designers and people who were like you know a little bit higher up the the kind of artistic ladder mm. um, got in touch with me and like were like wow I have never seen anyone do that before and that kind of it I'd done things like that before but I'd never really put them out there so mm. it was really nice to have that feedback of people that were professional people that were saying like you know that's that's you know a really clever idea I'm going to use that you know and that's the kind of thing that I'm trying to do more and more. That's why when I sat and worked out this squirrel, mm -hmm. the one part of this that I'm the most proud of, it sounds silly, is using the triangles for the ears. Because what I like to do is I like to not leave any waste. I don't like to grab something else and then waste that and put it in the bin. And that idea of taking those small little triangles out and moving them up, I think is the best part of that whole design because it, it sums up what I try and do when I'm putting those kind of things together. Yeah. Um, so that that's that's the kind of thing that I think sticks with me. Yeah, it's fabulous. And and I'm oh, sorry, we're off. Uh, um, I mean, yeah, you can see it with how, how the design works really well. Sorry, my face is there, the squirrels there. You can see how the design just works really well. Yeah, it's, um, it's almost like a little yeah. shoe, isn't it? The bottom yes. of it almost looks like the that's same. Right. You know, if you if, if you were making a, a Cinderella slipper it would be almost exactly that same shape, yeah? Yeah. Um, and it's that thing of breaking those shapes down, looking at an image of an animal and breaking them down into simple shapes. Um, and, and that's something, I, you know, I do a lot. I mean, you can see behind mm -hmm. me on the shelf, there's, there's various bits and pieces, but that's quite a good example. So this is sort of the same principle where, the, the pieces of cardboard that have been chopped out of that to make the legs become the ears. So those pieces of cardboard were the bits that you cut out to make the legs and they become right. the elephant's ears. Yeah. So little things like that are the kinds of ideas that, that I really sort of gel with. And they're, they're what excite me about the kind of work that I do. Oh, it's fantastic. And I mean, you've got a huge number of projects on your website. So that's darylwakelam.com. But the really exciting, and I, I hope you don't mind me saying this, the really exciting news is that all of your ideas, all of your creations and approaches will be in a book next year, hopefully, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I'm in the middle of doing. It's funny, actually, because I'm not going to do this because it's such a mess. But if I panned the camera around and showed you this little tiny room I'm in, 
I've got at the moment about probably about 80 different things that are in different stages of being made. So I'm trying to put a book together that's got not only some of the simpler things that I make, but also how you can adapt them. So um, an idea like this can become lots of animals and that idea of using a tube can become lots of different things so it's almost going to be lots of different um, simple simple uh, making projects that if you're working with very young children you can do the first couple of stages of and then you can just paint it or if you've got slightly older children or children that are a little bit more artistic and are a bit more skilled then maybe they can follow the stages through further down the kind of recipe so i'm providing almost like a sliding scale of skills that you can use and they're also interchangeable so some of the skills that you use for one project you can then adapt for another and that's really what i'm trying to put together i'm trying to put something together that is going to help teachers it's going to help parents uh, it's going to help people that work with children and do sort of after school clubs and things like that um and it will give them not only projects to do like the squirrel that we've done, but it will give them things that they can then adapt and take a little bit further as well. well. That's fantastic. And we just got one question in the Q&A box. Could you just go over how we attach the tail to the squirrel? Yeah, sure. Kind of yeah, in fact, job, but... that's no problem at all, because I've got the one here that I made oh. earlier on today. So when you've cut those triangles out for the ears, you've got that central little flap then, which you can actually turn up on itself like that. So it's kind of sticking out a little bit. And then if I just grab a little bit more foil, because obviously I used my one. So then if I just do this super quick, I'm not gonna wrap it with the tape, but if we make the S shape again, out of this bit of foil, one of those ends, whichever end you want to use, you then attach to that flap so i would always overlap it i'd put one over the other and then i'd roll some tape around that it's a bit tricky to do because you've got to kind of hold it together to do it but i would pop some tape on like that and then i would roll it around so keep it going keep it going like that and then obviously if you just attach it there it's going to slump backwards like that mm -hmm. so then what you've got to do is attach it back either onto the body or the neck so that's like putting a bridge of tape going over and back onto the body so it's going right the way across like that and obviously you you don't want it to make too much of a mess of it so it's a bit too big you can cut a little bit off but yeah you're attaching the tail to that flap underneath and then you're attaching it somewhere to the back obviously when it's finished like my little painted one here you don't notice that tape because it just looks like it's joined on like that okay and if you paint it a different color then the tail sort of stands out from the body anyway okay that's great there you go. thank you so much for that so can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, obviously you're spending a lot of time preparing for this big book that you that's going to be published next year. What are some of the other big things that you've got coming up? Are you at any festivals that some of these families can see online or, or any it's, events? It's, it's mainly school. So as soon as it goes back to term time, so obviously the children have recently gone back to school. Once they've settled in, that's when my work starts. So I think next week is the first start of those projects and that's really before covid that's what i was doing sort of every day and it was only really when covid happened and the schools weren't allowed to have the visitors in um that's when i changed tack and started doing more stuff online and and try really trying to help people that were doing initially i was trying to help parents that were struggling to look after their kids at home using what they'd got in the house yeah, and also as that. it went on um I started to get a lot of interest from teachers that had got bubbles of kids, sometimes different age groups all put together, which is what happened obviously after lockdown one. Um, and they wanted art things or craft things they could do with mixed abilities and mixed age groups. So that's where my stuff started to kick off online. But, but now I'll be back in schools again with, with the regular stuff. So a lot of, if people want to see the kind of things I do, then Obviously, I put stuff on my website, but I, I use Twitter a lot. I, I, you know, I go on there and usually if I've been to a school, I take photographs of what I've done and I put them on there as inspiration for other people to have a try. I need to stop fiddling about with my squirrel. That's what's happening right now. Um, obviously, everybody in the audience and on YouTube has enjoyed the talk. 
um, and, is, and ha is really inspired by what you do, of course, they can go to your website and find out more, darrellwakelam.com. Um, we also um, are a partnership of museums called Wessex Museums. And this event is part of our, well, part of our program called Wildlife in the Wren, which is a digital exhibition exploring endangered species within the UK. You can go to wessexmuseums.org.uk um, forward slash donation if you would like to donate to our um, work that we do with children families and all sorts of communities across Dorset and Wiltshire and um, thank you so much Daryl this has been amazing it's been very good to Pleasure. connect again and actually uh, yeah. usually when we're talking we're, we're usually making some kind of fossil or dinosaur so it's been refreshingly <laughs> nice to make something that isn't like you know extinct yeah no, that's brilliant. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what people do. It was great seeing your uh, version and Sarita's version. Yes, I can't wait to see what um, the other children or adults, you know, adults can have a go to and get your photos into the, the museum. And um, yeah, let's let's have a look at what everyone's done. I'm going to take some snaps of mine as soon as I wave goodbye okay. and we will put them on the uh, the website along with everything else. And finally, um, I just wanted to give a big shout out to our sponsor, Strategic Solutions, because they've made this entire range of talks for Wildlife in the Red, the digital exhibition, possible so that children, families um, are able to come together um, in these very difficult times of COVID and really meet people like yourself and, and just have brilliant experiences of learning about arts and crafts and and the natural world and and it has been a phenomenal series of events we've got our last talk coming up um, which is going to be beaver fever i'm just trying to remind myself of when that that is i'm going to go through the chat i think it was in the chat but you can go to wessex museum's website to find out exactly when that's happening i think it's next week please uh, let me know kathy in the chat if you can quickly um, but um, it is, it's next Thursday, it's beaver fever, and it's going to be really talking about the reintroduction of beavers to Purbeck if you're interested um, in things like that. So thank you very much, Daryl. That's been brilliant. And uh, I think Sweet right, has thanks. gone off, but I think she, I think, as you know, children get quite frustrated when they're like trying to get something perfect and desperately trying to make it work and then she's she's gone off because i think it's i think it's harder yeah. and i'm aware of this because when i do it it obviously looks easy because i've had a yes, lot of practice right. of doing it for years and the kids kind of try and keep up to to the the speed that i'm going at and obviously that's hard so it's yeah. really good to record it and to go back that's right to re-watch bits yeah brilliant thank you so much and thank you to everybody watching and joining in we can't wait to see what your squirrels look like and you know it's always been a dream of mine to work in blue work, work on blue peter as a presenter you know now i can finally say here's one i made earlier <laughs> thank you so much daryl have a good evening pleasure Gory, sorry okay. daryl just your final words you were going to say something no i was just going to say good luck and thank you very much it's been marvelous thank you that's marvelous thank you very much thanks everybody for watching goodbye